Hey guys, how you guys doing today? Happy Sunday, happy Sunday everyone. Don't mind me, I'm looking like, <laughs> like I just, like I just woke up. I'm just chilling here. <clears throat> so guys, I just wanted to come here and have a one-to-one -one talk with you guys about being a daddy's girl. And um, basically like, I feel like God's been calling me on a journey to be a daddy's girl. Like, because I am a daddy's girl, but for the past couple of, um, hold on, let me, oh, Father God, I just thank you for God, I just pray for God that you go before me, as I speak today, Father God, I have your will, God, hallelujah, Jesus, you put so much in me, Father God, help me distribute what you want me to say in your likeness, in Jesus' name I pray, amen, amen. Okay, so, basically, like, my whole thing now is daddy's girl, and basically it's like, um, when I was in the world, I used to feel like a motherless child. My number one thing that I used to always stress was that I was alone and I had nobody there. I was always stressing that, um, that, you know, my mother rejected me as a child. Uh, I just actually got a revelation as to why I felt so rejected by my mother, why she didn't, why she wasn't so close to me when I was younger and why we don't click like that and why I was always a daddy's girl and, um, I got the revelation last night why, you know, I was never like this with my mother and why I felt, you know, I just always felt like a black sheep. Like I was always rejected from, from birth, like, you know, like destined to just go through it, you know? Um, <laughs> but guys, I just wanted to just come out here with you blood raw. Cause God kept me up four o'clock in the morning just to endow with me all this stuff. He was telling me that, um, it seems like in the past couple of months or years that I've been growing with Christ, I was holding on to a lot of things that I didn't let go of. And I saw it there, but I didn't really pay attention to it. I was like, no, nah, that's not serious. You know, I'm just, I'm being too deep. It ain't that serious. And not realizing that it was that serious. Certain things is like you got a teddy bear that you used to hang on to when you was a kid and you never want to let go of it until, you know, you going off to college and it's time to let go of this bear and you're having a hard time letting go of this bear. You start having separation anxiety and it's like uh, you don't know how you can move forward without this bear or this was your comfort instead of like, you know, younger back in the day or, you know, during the time that we were going through, instead of just running to God with our problems, we were running to that friend or, you know, your best friend or that relationship or that boyfriend or that girlfriend, the first person that you will go to with your problems was that person. So unintentionally, that person may have become your God or your confidant or whatever. And then God comes and severs that friendship or relationship. And then you guys are now being separated. And it's like, what am I doing? What am I, what's going on? You know, like I'm in my patio right now, but I just recently got into planting. I don't, I'm not even like, I don't know where that came from, but I just started planting and I suck at it. <laughs> I'm not a green thumber for nothing. But what I realized is that a lot of my plants is that when they're growing, um, like, let me show you an example. Hold on. The scripture's in the room. I think it was, let me, let me check my phone real quick. I think it was John, hold on, no, Luke 18, Psalms 18, John 18, John 18. Was it? Let me check. I had it last night. Okay, so basically we're like a tree that's growing. You know, we're like a tree. And the more that we start to grow, and it's like the more that we start to grow as this tree, first we start as a, first we start as a seed, we get planted and we get water, okay? And then we start to grow. And God was basically saying, it was John 15. He was basically saying in the scripture, this is, I'm going to read from John 15, the beginning. He says, I am the true vine and the father is the gardener. So basically you could just tell, like, if you could see from my plants and stuff, like I'm not the greatest gardener. Okay. But this is the perfect example for me to tell you that because look. Oh, snap. This is just... This is really bad. And look at these over there. They dying like they're these are coming back to they're coming back to life cuz I take care of these. But look look at this one over here. Like they're dying. Like they're freaking dying. 
you know? So God is basically saying like, you know, I'm a good gardener and I love that scripture. And I'm going to stay, I'm going to stay right there on that scripture. I'm, I'm going, I'm going to stay right there on that scripture where he says that I am a, I am a gardener. Like he says right here in the scripture, he says, I am the true vine. He's real. He's legit. And he goes, and my father is the gardener. God is, the, he's the gardener. Okay. And he said, he's, he cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. And while every branch that does not bear fruit, he prunes it so that it will be even more fruitful. Bam! Right there. So that's how I feel right now in this season that I'm growing with God, that I'm being pruned, that I'm being shaken, that I'm being broken down as we speak. Like I've been, I went on a fast. I was like, I got to go on a fast. Something's wrong. I got to go on a fast. Things is not feeling okay. I'm going to go on a fast. I went on a fast. Um, God was able to, you know, my flesh died a little bit enough. So I was able to get the revelation that I needed to, to keep on going. And he was like, whatever is not fruitful, he needs to cut it off. Now, as we're growing, you know, we're going to pick up ants. We're going to pick up certain bugs on us and stuff like that. And we're going to eventually you know, die away. Like if it's not needed, he needs to take it off. We're growing. We pick up different characteristics, different attitude. We pick up different characteristics, different attitude, different spirits, different, you know, flavors and stuff like that. And God is like, yo, whatever that, that don't look like me, whatever I don't need, I'm going to cut it off. You feel me? So that's basically what happened here. He says, you are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. He said, now, you are already clean. We are already clean. Remember, once we've given ourselves to God, we are clean. We said, God, forgive us of our sins. It's forgiven. Before the sin even happened, it's already been done. Okay? But remember, just because God purchased us, you know, like if I go to if I go to Home Depot or Lowe's and I buy this plant, just because I bought this plant doesn't mean that does not mean that they may not be bugs in here. Doesn't mean that they it needs that that it's not. You know, I bought it, now I got to plant it, and I got to be a gardener. You understand me? Okay. He says, you are already clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. The word of truth, the one that he came when he came and saved you and said that you are forgiven for all your sins. You are already clean. No matter what sins you've done, remain in me as I remain in you. Um, Another translation is, abide in me as I abide in you, as a branch that cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine no more can ye except ye abide in me i'm gonna read another translation it says remain in me as i remain in you okay just as a branch is unable to produce fruit by itself unless it remains in the vine so neither can you unless you remain in me so god is the vine and we are the fruits if there's something that's not producing if there's leaves that's not producing this is my backyard. That's my garden. You understand me? I have to make sure that my plants are okay. I got to tend to my plants. I got to I got to be the gardener. You understand me? So, if it's my job to make sure that they're being watered in fruit. You understand me? Cuz I purchased them from the store. So, I got to maintain them. If not, they will die. And God is not like me. He's not a bad gardener. He's got a green thumb, okay? <laughs> See? He's not a boo-boo. He's not a sucky behind gardener he knows what he's doing he don't suck at gardening like me okay but um yeah <clears throat> so i think on the journey so i want to just stop right there and just say i think on the journey of growing with christ i have accidentally picked up different you know characteristics and different false labels false perception and taking them as mine and i have been walking on that course and so God has to like unravel me, like unravel me. Like, it's like I built this, I built, it's like I, this basket, this basket is being, is being built up. And upon this basket being built up, it, it was like, there's bad strings in there. So in order to take it out, you have to unwind the whole thing and take out the bad and then put it all back together. So I feel like that's what God is doing in me right now. Mm -hmm. So, so right here, he's saying that we can't bear fruit unless we're in him, which is true. I am the vine and you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you are you will bear much fruit apart from me. You can do nothing. 
So without, without God's word of knowledge, without his word of truth, I can't do nothing. I can't come and give you this word. I can't do my job here on this earth to come and try to be, you know, the light for you. If I have no light myself, what am I giving you? Do you understand me? Not remain in me. You are like a branch that is thrown away and whether such branches aren't picked up and thrown into the fire and burned. You become like this. You become like, this is a struggling Christian right here. This is a carnal struggling Christian that won't read their word, getting pissed on by dogs, getting pissed on by dogs and being treated all type of kind of ways. This is a, a, a struggling Christian right there. I don't want to be that. I want to be the pretty one that's over there. The more healthy one back there that you can see right there. I want to be her. I want to be that one. I want to be healthy. I want to be growing. I want to be beautiful. I don't want to be the one that's shriveling, dying, and just barely breathing. Peter, stop peeing on my stuff. Look at him. Peter. Yeah, go to your cage. Come here, Peter. Come here, boy. Come here. You, you going to stop peeing on my plants, Peter? You're going to stop peeing on my plants? You got to stop. You have to stop. It's not nice. Tell him, Leela. Make it here stink. His hormones are raging. I got to get him fixed. But, um, okay. Here we are. Next. Leela, calm down. All right. If you do not remain in me, you are like the branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up and thrown into the fire and burned. Okay. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it shall be done for you. So when I'm walking with God and I'm walking in his percepts and I'm trying and every day that I'm praying and I'm reaching out to him and I seek him daily and I come to him and I'm walking in his steps, his footsteps, whether I like it or not. Do you understand me? Whatever I may ask him, um, if you remain in me, ask whatever you wish and it shall be done for you. I can get whatever I want. Okay, a lot of things that I've prayed for, God has answered almost everything except the things that's not good for me. But yeah, exactly. Everything that I've prayed for, I've literally have gotten. So, you know, you do get rewarded for your good behavior with Christ, even though I say you shouldn't do it for good rewards. Um, if that's what's going to motivate you, do it because he's a good father. Why not? Why not? I know if I get straight A's and B's, I'm getting blessed. I'm getting paid. But it's good to do it anyways, but don't do it because you're getting paid. But it is good motivation to do it. It You know, it's something to motivate you. And if you don't, I'm pretty sure God will still, you know, look out. He's a good father. He knows how to, he knows how to take care of us. Okay? So, next. No, Lila. Okay. This is my father's glory that you bear much fruit showing yourselves to be my disciples. So, me coming to you guys, talking to you guys today is a good thing because God wants us to bear fruit. He wants us to uh, tell each other to share test, to share test, all right, to, Leela is a, is a kisser, y'all, to share, to, Leela, hey girl, hey girl, to share testimonies and, um, <clears throat> and to share testimonies, mm -hmm. To share testimonies and revelations to encourage each other because we need it. I was just saying on Facebook, I was like, yo, is there any local, you know, people around my area that I could fellowship with to get with, you know, to encourage each other as iron shoppers iron, you know, like, let's chill, let's hang out, do some social events. But a lot of people don't. So I'm like, okay, whatever. I'm just going to stick to my YouTube and deal with my YouTube city because my YouTube city is lit anyways. I don't care. It's all good. And during this process of pruning, sometimes it's going to be hard. It's going to be dark. It's going to be lonely sometimes. And God is just going to be cleaning you up and unraveling you of a lot of stuff that, you know, that you need to know from your past, present, and future. He's just going to start building you up, preparing you for your ministry and preparing you prophetically to help other people because he needs to put in you so you can give out. He's not just going to send you out there empty, not knowing nothing, no experience, no real testimonies that can help other people. You need to be certified and verified. You understand me? So this is school, basically. All right, so now I'm on nine right here. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love. And that's the message that he gave you. Now remain in his love. Remain in his glory. Searching him out. If you've been through a dry spell like I have and haven't been searching him like, like you know, like how you normally would, well, 
do like a three day fast if you want to do it with like a mutual friends or whatever or even with yourself just do it like whatever fast you want to do try to seek him out seek his face and let god start to talk to you so you can go out there nobody's telling you to be super deep take it very slow take it very lightly and give a little and walk through his peace let his peace come over you and spread the message and then do it again and then until you know god keeps giving you more revelations because this whole purpose is us going out to preach the gospel to give the gospel to to spread it out and so when we get up to heaven he'll say well done my child with you i'm very pleased you understand me because i'm not saying that because of the crowns and stuff that we get in heaven for the things that we've done but it's good that you've sold it back into the earth before you left you were a good respecter of the earth i know i say that but like one shouldn't have to get paid to to share this with you i'm just doing this to tell you that god is faithful god is real and I know I started this YouTube thing like a long time ago and then I went and got married and then now I'm here and then like it's just through it all I'm telling you through it all the number one thing that one should do before my marriage before my children before my dogs before my siblings before my life is dealing with God it's being with God and letting him prepare me because I don't know what my future is going to be like I don't know what he's called me to exactly but all I know for right now, he's called me to focus on him and be about him. Be about my father's business. Do you understand me? Because there's so much that he wants to do in my life and he cannot do it if I'm not seeking him out. And I'm so happy that he, ignite, he ignited back my appetite to want to talk to him again. To come birth that back into me again. He's brought that back to me again. Because at one point, I couldn't, I couldn't get up to pray if I wanted to. I couldn't get up and say... I was just like, God, who, like, I was just going off of vapors. But now he's like, but now he's like, you know, he's, he's, he's dealing with me. He's dealing with me. He's talking to me. He's, he's walking with me. So I appreciate that. So guys, I don't want to keep you too long. Just go ahead, like, comment, and subscribe. I hope this word was encouraging to you. This is um also, this is off of the Holy Ghost. God used one of my sisters last night, two of my sisters last night, to minister to me as well. All of the stuff he was just downloading in my spirit through them. And I was able to come and give you this now. Because this is where I am. So I just wanted to share that with you to also inspire you if you're going through the same thing. So draw near to him and he'll draw near to you. Okay? And he means that. Okay? You guys, he works. He, he's good. If I get rejected, I've been signed up to a whole bunch of new clicks and a whole bunch of new meetings lately. And if I get rejected from my faith because I believe... Oh, well, all it does for me is just put me in my prayer room and I have a list of people that I got to pray for and pray that God will have an encounter with them so they can come to know Christ as well. So that's it, guys. I'll see you guys later. All right. Bye.